So now I will present the fixed point iteration method. The fixed point iteration method consists of converting the problem f of x equals zero into a problem of the type x equal g of x. For example, if f of x is equal x minus exponential minus x, a possible choice for g of x is g, g of x is equal exponential minus x. So graphically, it consists of finding the intersection of g of x with the line y equals x. The fixed point iteration algorithm is quite simple. So we start by an initial point x0 random and then we compute the solution at step n plus 1 from the solution at step n by the following iteration xn plus 1 is equal to g of xn. So for example x1 is equal to g of x0, x2 is equal to g of x1, etc. And we repeat the process till xn plus 1 minus xn doesn't differ up to a precision epsilon. Okay, Till xn plus 1 minus xn in absolute value is inferior or equal to some precision epsilon that we define in advance. Now, let's see graphically the graphical interpretation of this method. So we start by a point x0 here. Then we get the point x1 is equal to g of x0. And then x2 is equal to g of x1. And then x3 is equal to g of x2, etc. As you can see here, we got the solution in approximately three iterations. In order to ensure the convergence of the algorithm, the function g of x have to be carefully chosen. Because if the function g of x is not carefully chosen, it may not lead to convergence of the algorithm. So the, co the two conditions in order that to ensure the, the, con the convergence of the algorithms are first, the function g of x has to be a contraction. Now, before defining a contraction, I will define a Lipschitz function. So a function g of x is called a Lipschitz continuous function on the closed interval a, b. If it exists a constant l such as the absolute value of g of x2 minus g of x1 is inferior or equal to l, the absolute value of x2 minus x1, no matter what x1, x2 belong to the interval a and b. Then, if this condition is fulfilled, g of x is called a Lipschitz function of on the closed interval a and b. Now, in addition, if this constant l is between 0 and 1, g of x is called a contraction. So basically for a contraction, the absolute value of g of x2 minus g of x1 must be inferior or equal to x2 minus x, x1. No matter what x1, x2 belonging to the interval a, b. Now, this condition may be difficult to verify in some cases. So a simpler and sufficient condition for g of x to be a contraction is that the absolute value of g prime of x must be inferior or equal to 1 no matter what x belong to ab. Now the second condition that the function g of x has to verify is the inclusion condition. So the inclusion condition states that no matter what x belong to a, b, g of x must belong to a, b. Now, we will prove that 
the if the function g of x fulfills these two conditions, then the algorithm of the fixed point iteration will converge towards the solution. So the error at the step n plus 1 is given by xn plus 1 minus s, where s is the solution in absolute value. So this is equal to g of xn minus g of s, because the fixed point iteration is xn plus 1 is equal to g of xn. And the solution satisfy the condition s equal g of s. Because the function g of x is a contraction, so g of xn minus g of s is inferior or equal to xn minus s in absolute value. Now, repeating the same procedure, we get that xn minus s in absolute value is inferior to xn minus 1 minus s in absolute value, which is inferior to x0 minus s in absolute value, which is x0 is the initial solution, the random initial solution. So basically, the error is decreasing with the number of iteration, and we are getting closer and closer to the solution. So this means that the algorithm converged towards the solution. Now, suppose that we have an interval a, b, such as the problem f of x equals 0 admits a unique solution in this interval. And suppose that the contraction condition is fulfilled, but the inclusion condition is not fulfilled. So the middle third theorem gives us a way to ensure the inclusion by enlarging the interval AB. So the middle third theorem state that if we have an interval AB, such as the solution S exists in this interval AB, then if we construct a larger interval capital A capital B, such as the interval AB is the middle third of this large interval, then the choice of x0 inside of AB, the initial solution, will lead to an inclusion in the larger interval capital A capital B if the contraction condition is still satisfied on this larger interval. Okay, so basically now, how we can prove this theorem? So, we prove present, precedently that if G is a contraction, then Xn minus S is inferior to Xn minus 1 minus S, which is inferior to X0 minus S, etc. Now, if X0 belongs to the small, the, the interval AB, then X0 minus S is in, in absolute value is inferior or equal to, to B minus A in absolute value. Then, using the first relationship, Xn minus S is inferior to the absolute value of B minus A. Now, if I express Xn now, so this means that Xn is between minus B minus A plus S, and b minus a in absolute val value plus s, okay? which is between the capital A and capital B okay, uh, values. So xn is then a included in the interval ab. Then we have, if we have contraction in this large interval and we have contraction then the algorithm will converge so the middle third theorem states basically that if the inclusion is not 
satisfied on a given interval, if we construct a larger interval with a being equal to a uh, minus b minus a in absolute value and and b is equal to uh, capital B is equal to b plus b minus a, then if you choose x0 in this interval a b, then you will have inclusion in the larger interval a b. Of course, that you have convergence, you have to have also contraction on this larger interval. Now, as an example of the choice of g of x, we will consider the, the problem that we treated before, f of x is equal to x plus log x. So, in this case, we, we uh, already showed that this problem has a unique solution as belong to the interval 0, 1. Now, a first choice for g of x would be basically x is equal to minus log of x. So, g of x is equal to minus log of x. So, in this case, if I study now the first derivative of g of x, g prime of x is equal to minus 1 over x. Now, g prime of x in absolute value is superior to 1 in the interval 0, 1, because x is inferior to 1. So, this, is, this quantity would be superior to 1 in absolute value. So this is not a contraction and this is not an appropriate choice for g of x. Now for this problem we can define another function g of x that will lead to convergence. So for example instead of choosing x g of x is equal minus log x, I can re-express the problem as log of x is equal to minus x, and if I take the exponential now, so I get exponential of log x is equal to x is equal to exponential minus x. So I get x is equal to exponential minus x. So I can choose g of x is equal exponential minus x. Now, if I study the derivative of g prime of x, I get minus exponential minus x. And the absolute value of g prime of x, in this case, because x is between 0 and 1, then it's inferior to 1 in this case. So g of x is a contraction. So the contraction condition is fulfilled. Now let's study the inclusion in this case. So, g of, z, g of 0 is equal to 1. So, it belongs to interval 0, 1. g of 1 is equal to exponential minus 1. Also, it belongs to the interval. And because g prime of x is negative, so the maximum value for g of x is 1, and then it, it decreases to exponential minus 1, but g of x is contained in the interval 0, 1, no matter what x belong to, belonging to this interval. So the inclusion condition in this case is satisfied. So this is a simple example on how if a first natural choice of g of x doesn't lead to convergence, you can change the definition of g of x in order to have the contraction and inclusion condition satisfied and then convergence of the algorithm. As we stated before, the algorithm for the fixed point iteration method is very simple. We compute the solution at the step n plus one by taking xn plus one 
is equal to g of xn where xn plus 1 is the solution at the step n plus 1 xn is the solution at step n so basically we have to save the previous solution and the current solution and repeat the process till the difference in absolute value between the current solution and the previous solution becomes inferior to some precision epsilon that we specify. So we start by defining a, b, the function g of x, and this is the initial solution x0, and epsilon, the precision. And then we compute x1 is equal to g of x. So this is the solution at the first step. Then we enter the while loop. So while x1 minus x is superior to epsilon, we save the previous solution. So x is equal to x1. So this is the solution at step one that we save it. We compute the solution at the second step, x1 is equal to g of x, and we repeat the loop till x1 minus x becomes inferior to epsilon. Then we exit the loop and print the solution and end the program. Now, as a task, I will ask you to write a MATLAB program that solves the problem x plus log x equals zero using the fixed point iteration method with the following condition so x zero is equal zero five this is the initial solution epsilon is equal to ten, ten minus six this is the precision so you will count the number of iterations and you will compare with the bisection method 